Hello, gorgeous. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Give Them Lala podcast. Before we deep dive into it all, I need to remind you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and make sure you comment on this video because I love to bump gums. Thank you. OMG, what a weekend. What a week. We made it through the rain. Easton, uh, have you ever heard the Mariah Carey song? Can I sing you something? Yeah. <laughs> Please. Where she's like, I can make it through the rain. I can't stand up once again. Is that hey. what you were playing in yes. the house as it was pouring? <laughs> you know what? All I'm grateful for when it rains is that it doesn't feel like just another day. Sure. You love the rain, though. Oh, love the rain. Was it too much, though, last Never. week? Never. There's no there such thing. No no. When I first... So I, I bought a home. I bought a home in Woo! L.A. Congrats! Congratulations. And I was looking as it was raining at my pool. I was like, <laughs> you know, I love the rain, but if that thing starts flooding, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so I called. I'm like, who does one call when they're worried about something like this? Because we're just a bunch of chicks in the home, you sure. know? And so I called the realtor and was like, what do I do? And she's like, well, like, it has a drain. But if you ever have something happen where you're worried about flooding, like, you need to go to Home Depot, get some sandbags. I'm like, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> I call my mom and she goes, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You have insurance. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's fine. Like, we don't do masculine things. But I did. I had ADT come. And, you know, I'm not messing around. You're not messing around. Also, if we look this way, mm -mm. you guys, on the cameras, Lisa and Ocean are here. So, Woo! just so Hi, baby. Knows. Welcome. Ocean said to me when I told her we were coming to record the podcast today, she goes, Mom, you say a lot of bad words on the podcast. Oh. My mom's, and Gigi's going to wash her mouth out with soap. <laughs> Honestly, said, she better. She better. <laughs> she better. This is a cuss free episode right here. What, mom? Have I ever watched anybody talk about it like that? No, but that's what we say. We're we're a household full of threats. That's what we do. <laughs> the whole the name of the game is Santa, make everyone fear Washington. us. Yeah. But like don't call us on the poker face. <laughs> don't call my bluff because there's nothing. It's kind of like when I'm barking, right. if someone really were to go toes, it would be like and this is where I run. Where are my hokas? <laughs> not the hokas. Uh, not the hokas. Um, what ADT. were we talking about? ADT, you got. Oh, so I'm like, I love apartment living for one reason and one reason only. And that's because I like the amount of like security that you have to go through to get to one's apartment. And where I was living before, it was like gate after gate after gate and you need a different code for each gate and you need a different code to get into the place to get into the elevator and then you got to get up to the top floor and choose my apartment out of all the apartments that are up there, which right. there's a lot. So I just I liked the odds of me getting robbed versus not getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel like the odds are in my favor. Now... We are in a home where I'm feeling a little exposed. We got a gate. Got a gate. We're all good. We got the codes and on codes on codes. But I'm like, we need to be stacked. Mm -hmm. So I just want to shout out ADT because they came in. And I'm not even joking you, you guys. The amount of stuff that they were like, I think you need this and here's why. Okay. I don't mess around with safety. I got a kid. I got a mama. Like, sell me on anything. Like, I don't think of them as, like, used car salesmen. I'm, like, the breakaway window stuff. So if someone tries to break the window instead of opening it, like, still ringing to the police. Mm -hmm. All right? There's movement in the house, and that person weighs over 25 pounds, and I've set that to away. We're not home. Calling the police. Right. What if they weigh under 25? Then... Who's coming in to rob me who weighs less than 25 pounds? That's true. And I if could, they do, you could self-defend. I feel like I could take that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, being a homeowner is um, very strange and weird, but also awesome. And exciting and congrats because literally, um, what a, what a freaking boss bitch move. 
Right? It's, two homes. I mean, that's incredible. I got two homes. homes. Is that a song? Well, two, two phones, phones by Kevin Gates. <laughs> oh. I got two, two. homes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> And Ocean loves it. Yeah, it's she says, stunning. Buy too. new home. She does. She's and yesterday got a she was just. You, you like, like rainbows? rainbows? She likes yeah. rainbows. Do you like running around you the house what? too? Yeah. Yeah. She was taking laps. Oh, yesterday she's talking about game. rainbows because she's got a producer bag John them. bought her a bag of Skittles. <laughs> Thank you for that, <laughs> producer John. <laughs> you got. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, so I don't know what the point of that was that I was telling you that we bought the new home. Talk oh, about the rain. And the, the rain. rain. Mm-hmm. So as long as it didn't flood. But also for Super Bowl Sunday, I was really, really excited to fill the home full of people to watch the game. So fun. And for a moment, I'd invited like Easton and his friends over. Some of my friends, they like the party. They don't want to come to a house. But like the the Bo and the Stoss, they're totally down to come to the house and have a chill time. So a week and a half ago, I invited them to come to the house. And then I was feeling a little stressed. I'm like, I feel like I'm not prepared to like host anything. So then everyone aborts mission, mostly because I cancel. She canceled. <laughs> she no did? One aborted. I canceled. Here's the thing that she does. I canceled. And when she stresses, the one thing that you don't do is add more to it. So she goes, so she canceled Bo and Stassi. So when she did that, I was like, I'm not going to throw more on her and bring my sure. friends. So I made other plans. And then we're on our way home, and she's like, well, everyone's canceled on me. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> let's get this straight. So then she immediately texts Bo and Saucy on the phone, and she goes, they're coming. So I was like, all right, I'll bring the homies. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone came over. We had a stacked house. Lisa was a savage. She spent the entire week moving her Utah house because they, whoop, Easton whoop. and my mom sold the Utah house. <laughs> so they spent all week moving in yep. Utah. They got in Saturday night, and Lisa pulled together um, a fantastic Super Bowl Sunday um, spread Aww. for that everybody. Did. That she did. Easton was a tremendous help. That's so fun. I'm oh, yeah, so I mean, glad you guys well, had yeah, a good time. It was nice. Got some pizza. It was easy. Costco was a shit show, if anyone was at that. It was a nightmare. I love Costco, but it's a shit show before events and holidays. Anything, yeah. Well, especially when you're choosing Super Bowl, like, the day of. Yeah. Well, we had no choice. We got in Saturday at No, 11. I know. And yeah. I told everyone the night before that I was like, okay, I, I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like we can pull this together. Um, the game was a little snoozy until it totally wasn't snoozy at all. I got to say, I don't think it was snoozy the entire time oh, because it was, it was so close. Game. What? The first half? Oh, it can be On close, what? but that was such a boring game. Oh, I was just like into it. Haven't you ever watched a Super Bowl where it's like, it's like, oh, they're going to win, clearly. This is boring. By like halftime show, you're like, eh. You know, it. most Super Bowls and games, I'm creating my own personal roster, so sure. I don't really care what the score is. Mm, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yes, my yes. Lord. <laughs> oh, my land. I'm Protect like, who all. am I going to be? <laughs> you just stop it, it right there. Stop it right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this game, it was a little snoozy, even though it was like a close game, whatever. Mm. <laughs> um, And I was kind of sitting there thinking, like, I love Ursher, but I don't know that I'm excited for him to be the halftime performer and Wait, i was on here what ursh is it usher or ursher well ursher peace out Easton, down. are you joking okay me right well now? i don't know i'm thinking <laughs> was i i'm about to just... bitch slap you it's <sighs> usher <laughs> but everyone it's says ursher. ursher just like when they say we're going to the club yeah ah the r okay mm-hmm. i learned mm-hmm. something today it's wow. okay you're stupid I'm just kidding. <laughs> i need to kind of get a little more involved in that one i'm joking but I was actually really, really pleasantly surprised. I thought the halftime show was iconic when Ludacris came out and Lil John. Right, That's Lil John looking kind of fine. Really, a little um, bit in Usher, all leather. Did you, his off white. That was off white. Was it? Yeah, Lil Virgil? John's Usher's like black and blue. Oh, that was sick. Off white. Uh, oh, yeah! Shout out. That's awesome. So good. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought the whole performance was amazing. Mm-hmm. Her coming out. I did like it more than mm-hmm. most. Than you thought you would. Yeah. I mean, last year was what, Rihanna? That might have been my top. What is your all-time favorite Super Bowl performance? Because mine might be Rihanna. For a while, it was the Britney Spears and Aerosmith. That was, like, iconic, but now I think Isn't it's Isn't that Rihanna. when he was, like, flying in on the... 
Oh, it was like so a, fucking good. Her, so good. Sorry, sorry. It's sorry, fine. Sorry. It's fine. It's uh, fine, Jessica. I've said it too. She it's all good. One rip. Um, no, my most favorite game and halftime performance of all time was San Francisco, Baltimore, Baltimore. and Beyonce was Beyonce. the yeah. performer. It was right. like that was good. That was the most fun I've ever had for a Super Bowl because my sister in law was born and raised in San Francisco, so she's hardcore 49ers. We love the Baltimore Ravens. And then, like, my idol, the icon, the queen of all queens is the halftime performer. Done. Done. It w- Ray nothing Lewis's will ever beat season. that. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Oh, but then there was the Dr. Dre 50. That one was that so was good, That was one too. of my most favorite halftime performances. If we're strictly talking about the halftime performance, yeah. that, that was, was legit. Kendrick. Oh, that was good. Wait, maybe that's one of my top. I don't know. I don't even know who played in that Super Bowl. I don't either. And Fofty coming down <laughs> like such a beefcake. Is it the Rams? It was <laughs> producer John. He was like, it's the, one of the biggest things I regret. <laughs> it's doing that. <laughs> what? 50 said that? Well, yeah, because it was like the iconic right. in the club where he, his first single where yeah. he drops from the ceiling, but he's, he looks. His body's a little different <laughs> than <the> now. <laughs> hot still. Very hot. Get on top of me. Either way, I'll take you then. I'll take you now. Sure. I'll take you 500 years ago. Mm. Don't care. <laughs> get on top of you. I feel like you should get on top of him, though. I'm he horny would. today. <laughs> I can tell. Wow, that's amazing. This will be f- a fun episode. I put together no, my vibrator you. drawer in the new house. Okay, why and when and for what? What do you mean for what? Well, what do you mean? That like, was the put one thing she was afraid of. It was we were clearing out her house, and she goes, "No one go through that drawer." My bedside <laughs> tables used to be massive in the apartment, and the the room was tiny, teeny tiny. But I've got this window in my bedroom, so the way the bedroom situated is my my nightstands have less like drawer space. Mm-hmm. So one of the nightstands is just strictly for her pleasure. That's great. It is. <laughs> How many does one need? Are I, you joking? No. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> How many toys does one need? I, at least a few because it, you're in like a different mood every mood time. Sometimes. The ones I don't, the ones that scare me are the ones that look like bunny rabbits and like they're like, I don't use those because I get scared. What? what Having, they're like? like, they're like, they're like, sh- Big and they've got Draw like it. ears. 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 They're like they're like um like <laughs> <laughs> Draw Jessica it. Draw it. They're and like th- this, and then they've got like ears. Oh, is that for the butt? Oh, I have one of those. Oh, is that the if you can the... see, these are the vibrators I don't like. Oh, cause I think the clit tickler, right? Clit that tickler. What that is? And the uh, asshole. I got what about the one? Because the one that scares me, it looks like it. The has, dildo that I got? I don't know. Oh, that, <laughs> which one? Huh? I don't know. That could take out. Didn't I show you at the office? The purple one? Or the pink? one that you turned down. You're oh, like, yeah, I, I don't like, know I'm, about that one. No, I was like, that you. is not up for grabs. It's that coming thing home with is me. a weapon. I I saw that. I was like, there's just no way. No. Well, that is a weapon. And you that's when I that's self-defense. when I said, there's no com- how do as a man mm-hmm. looking at that, how do we compete? You I'm can't. Shocked. And then I saw one that had like it's an orca long, tail and an I had no orca idea. Orca tail. And it was it, you told me it was for the clit. And I was mm. like, "Oh." Yeah, does it does Well, that's on the dildo. Yeah. How many a, arms does that like, thing have? So, it's just like the long part like that. Yeah. And then it has the thrusting motion. Okay. <laughs> then yeah, it's got this she turned like, it on for ribbed me too. beating. Then <laughs> it's got this ribbed beating that like moves, right? And then it's got this other piece that vibrates for the I the, have to a be man honest. cannot compete. When you, you get would this assume toy, that thing would be for torture back I in the day. I have to be fully honest, torture. Lala. I don't know how that even goes near your body because yeah. I've seen Lala's vagina and she's got the teeniest tiniest little vagina <laughs> sorry and it's I do not know how that toy even is anywhere near that mm. <laughs> sorry Easton if you need to throw up I totally get it my bad Easton I, I forgot you were here alright uh, let's get back <laughs> let's get back to um the Super Bowl okay okay so uh. how do we feel about the commercials you guys Oh, I thought they were pretty good. I thought they good. were good. I thought they were good. Yeah. I liked the Dunkin' Donuts one with... I liked the Dunkin' Donuts one, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. I thought it I was, thought was great. Funny. Maybe a little cheesy, but everybody little that was in it was great. And, like, 
J-Lo looking at Tom and just saying, but you can stay. What that was the like vibe little, of that, by the way? I don't, was that like you're good at singing or was that like you're hot? He's like a DJ like, and he's just hot. Oh, <laughs> I, think I think that's it's what like it your was. Tom, like your Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. Oh, you stay. spicy. Yeah. What do no. you think? I was a little underwhelmed. You were. By just that one or all of them? Just, I feel like halftime commercials back in the day were so... You didn't miss the commercials. You'd miss the game to go to the bathroom. Super Bowl exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like back I in just the day. don't feel like you have iconic people in them. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought that the one with Ice Spice was so stupid. I don't even know if I saw that one. I don't know if I did with either. With the drink. the What brand? I couldn't even tell oh. you. I thought it was Sprite, but it's not. No. It's a different lemon-lime drink. Can we talk about what type of budget Verizon had to get Beyonce? Well, I want to talk about this because yeah. I was wondering how much celebrities get paid. And it said there was like a baseline of $10 million. And I'm like, I just don't buy it. I just don't. I'm sorry. I don't think Ice Spice is getting paid what Jennifer Lopez is getting paid. Yeah. Or Messi. Yes. Or Right. right. Messi. Exactly. I mean, so than, let's well. use that as, as the example. Who was that for, Michelob? Uh, no, let me see. I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, I think it Beer. was Michelob. And, and who was paid. in it? Who was in it? Messi? Messi, and I don't even know. Sudeikis, just, right? Jason Sudeikis was? Wasn't he? Yeah, I just saw Messi, and I literally looked up immediately how much he was getting paid for this that commercial, and I didn't even see anybody else. But he okay. got paid. I'm going to Google this. Real yeah. nice. $14 how, million. Oh, $14 million? For a 30 set. He gets paid Fourteen million for that thirty second, and that, and they have to pay for the spot. Ah, what? Like, think of that. They just had to pay him to use that, and now you still got to pay for the spot. And I think the spot's like seven million. For how much was it? It was John? with Dan Marino. Do you know how much a uh, position was like a commercial spot? No, I don't know. The- like how much it costs to get a Super Bowl spot? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that. But I do know that the halftime performers do not get... Seven million for 30 seconds. Seven million dollars for 30 seconds. That's like pocket change for For some of these... For these brands. It's like... That's just crazy. Not even a thought. Just crazy. But the super... Or the halftime performers don't get paid. They only have their production costs covered, which can run up to like... $15 Fifteen million dollars, but really? they don't get paid. But think how many people are today Watch. playing like Usher. Yeah, yeah, Usher. that's true. Like now, Usher, baby, mm-hmm. I loved his set. No, it was great, and I thought he did well. I didn't admit this at the beginning of the show. Um, I didn't watch the halftime performance. How messed up is that? Yeah, but not that j- messed up. Just, I only so, watched a little, and then I went outside and played basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the real though, mm-hmm. I had a call time for something on Sunday. And I said to Jessica, that's Super Bowl Sunday. Like, we have to re... Like, I'm not doing this until 6 p.m. on Super Bowl Sunday. And so we started work at 6 a.m., wrapped at 3. Jessica says to me, I think I'm just going to, like, go on a hike. (laughs) And I got depressed for her. I I just got depressed, It was so depressing. And then people that were on set... I was like, I hope you guys can, like, go and enjoy the game now. And they're like, nah. Uh, a couple guys I heard talking about it. A couple. The of- sound guys, right? Yes. But then again, Super Bowl I- hits different because you were talking to um, one of my homies. And we said that we stopped watching football and sports when we moved out here. Right. That's what I was going to talk yeah. about. Yeah. So I was saying it's weird because so many people in L.A. don't really watch sports. And I remember growing up in Utah. Easton, you were in the same household, so you know. Like, it was Monday night football, Thursday night football, Saturday was for college, and we had Sunday football. Mm -hmm. Like, it was constant. And then most nights during basketball season, basketball was playing. Yeah. Like, I grew up in a very, like, sports-heavy household. When I moved out to L.A., I just stopped watching because it was like no one cared about sports. And so I was talking to you, East, and a couple of your friends, and they were saying what? After moving out here, you just kind of stop watching because most games, and this is how I felt, because most games are like East Coast. Right. And then there's only a couple over here. But like East Coast, they start at like four. Yeah. And so I'm not watching a basketball game at four. So once I get home and I'm like relaxing, like there's only one game on. And if it's not a team I'm interested in, I usually won't watch or I'll just have it background. But now it's just like to the point where – I don't know. I'm more go, go, go. I'm going to your place or doing stuff with friends. So it's just like I've 
fallen off of the sports. Like, I don't care as much to go and watch sports. I, like, I'm doing other things. Mm. And it was, right. like, I feel like in Utah, there wasn't as much going on. It was also frigid. Frigid. Mm-hmm. So, like, you don't go out. You stay inside or you go to a bar and you watch sports. Here That's it's like point, you yeah. go on a hike after or you get outside. And I've lost touch with sports. I really have. Like, I'll look up scores and I would like to not, things, though. But I, I would agree, like but- to not. I, I like the way a sport on the television makes me feel. I like the vibe of the household. <laughs> hey. Hi, Hi, Goof. Um, so you didn't watch the Pick halftime? Show? I didn't watch the halftime because I did end up going on a hike. Oh, came home, got some stuff situated, and then turned it on right as it was the halftime show was ending. But that was great because so that's why I didn't think the game was boring, you guys, because I didn't, didn't watch, watch the it. first <laughs> half. Watch the second half. <laughs> the second half is when that's it a popped great off. Game. It's like, yeah, I was, was like, st- I didn't think it was boring at all. <laughs> it was so boring. And then Stasi was like, Messer is getting, like, it was 6.30. It was time for his bath. And Bo started putting yeah. the stuff away. And I was like, where's Bo? Kansas City finally scored. <laughs> And he was putting baby stuff in the car, and no. she was like, "I'm the worst wife. Don't tell him." I was like, "Well, he's gonna walk in he's here and probably see. see the playback." So it was like the interception yeah, no, was, for the yeah. touchdown. I felt so bad. Bo comes in, he takes his hat off, starts rubbing his head, and he goes, "Yeah, no, I don't give a shit." <laughs> I was like, "I can take you home, Bo." <laughs> yeah. Stassi, in fact, gave a shit. He was like, "I know." He had Taylor a Taylor Swift, Swift shirt on. Yeah. Everyone at my house wanted the Niners. Yeah. This is how I look at it, Easton, because mom was like, well, we live in California. I'm like, it doesn't matter. No, you just That's hate like the, team. the University of Utah not making it into something, and then it's that team versus BYU. Are you going to be like, well, I really want BYU. No. Right. No! Anybody plays BYU, I'm rooting for anybody the else. The opposite team. Yeah, that makes sense. So Bo right. had Taylor Swift shirt on, and then he had a Rams hat, that the said, colors that said F the Niners. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He goes, I've stopped going to nine, or, uh, Rams games when they play the Niners. Cause it's just, it's, it's insufferable. Just, <laughs> it's just Niner Nation. I like how you do his voice. It's hilarious. I love him. He doesn't sound like that. <laughs> um, so we can agree that snoozy first half, pleasantly surprised by the halftime show commercials could have been better but iconic people so we're gonna let it slide except beyonce's verizon beyonce, beyonce. no budget I'd in the world the verizon yeah. come i think I'd oh you gotta that. look yeah. it up it's like i a, didn't it was fan it was really was good. good i have yeah. to say that must have been that's another thing too how many shooting days at least a few so you've got beyond i don't know i just did like, you see beyonce in the box yeah no, no. And With, jay-z oh my <gasps> she looks she? so good she's got this a blonde and the way it was, it was like bombshell hair. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you are like really hitting different right, right now. Give Them Lala is sponsored by BetterHelp. A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, yourself, or family. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's not just for those who have experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash GTL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash GTL. BetterHelp.com slash GTL. Parenting my daughter through her terrible twos is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. And then trying to fit work and life in around that, no wonder I'm exhausted. And I know you have the exact same struggles, trying to do it all and take care of yourself too. That's why I'm doing Hydration Mondays with Liquid IV. Hydration is one of the best things you can do for your health and well-being. And Liquid IV helps me feel revived and ready to take on the week. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, and it's got eight vitamins and nutrients, and it's sugar-free. Plus, I almost forgot to mention the most important thing, well, at least for me, 
It tastes amazing. I actually enjoy drinking it. And they've got so many flavors, white peach, green grape, lemon lime, and one of my favorites, strawberry lemonade. Liquid IV comes in pre-measured stick packs. You pour one pack into 16 ounces of water and drink. It's really just that easy. Weekends are for going wild. Have a game plan on Monday with Liquid IV. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use my code LALA at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Superior Hydration today using promo code LALA at liquidiv.com. Um, okay, so game ends. I didn't watch the overtime. I got I fell asleep in it. No, I got the most excruciating headache that I had to go and sit in hot water. That's wild. At that point, I didn't even care who won, who lost. I just had to, like, get rid of the it headache. It was that bad. We talked about it earlier. Why Why do you think it was that bad? I didn't drink enough water. Mm-hmm. I get headaches like Hi, that, baby. too. Um, but obviously, I saw this morning that the first thing Travis Kelsey said to Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. She love. Do you love Taylor Swift? Let's go to Taylor Swift. Um, what's your favorite song by Taylor Swift? Super oh, Can you give us a sample? Can you sing it? I say, I'm too okay. late. That's shake it off, right? Yeah. No. Is it? Is it? Oh, yeah. Got nothing in my brain. Yeah, yeah. That's what people say. Shake it off. Okay. Um, so after he's done giving his speech or whatever, where he's like, you got to fight for your right to party. <laughs> By the way, I had no idea he's a ginger. You didn't? Nope. Had no idea he had red hair. Oh, but it's a, still I didn't hot. either. Still oh. hot. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the way the sun hit the beard and I was like, oh, okay. we're a redhead. Yeah. All right. Um, he said... Come here, girl. <gasps> so hot. I, oh. So hot. I turned off my mic. But <laughs> That's how oh hot she just got. Oh, my God. The hottest thing a man can say to a woman, in my opinion, is come here. It doesn't even have to be girl after, even though that makes it hotter. Come here? Come here? Um, But I wanted to know, Easton, because I missed overtime, what is this whole thing about Taylor Swift's favorite number and 13 being in the mix? Well, I also fell asleep. Okay. During overtime. But okay. I saw that Taylor Swift's favorite number is 13 and then everything connected to this conspiracy. So, Taylor Swift, this is these are her stats for 13. Okay. Her flight to the Super Bowl was mm-hmm. 13 hours. Okay. I believe it was from Tokyo or something like that. Me and John were talking about it. That is, we don't know. But the flight was 13 hours. We do know that. It was her 13th NFL game. Okay. They were playing the 49ers, 4 plus 9, 13. <gasps> Super Bowl 58, 5 plus 8, Whoa! 13. This and then joke. this is where it gets crazy on the last play of the game. This is what I woke up for, 13. The last play of the game was snapped at 6 seconds. Okay. It was first and 3, and they got the 3 yards for the touchdown. If you add 6, 3, Three, one. You got 13. For I'm the bad final. at math. I will take your word for it. Does that, that equal 13? <laughs> Does that equal 13, John? Six, six. There you we go. We got the up. thumbs up. OMG. That Wait, is wild. Six, 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 three? So, yeah, it was that's snapped with eight, six. That's 19. No, six plus three. Oh. Plus three plus one. 13. That is 13. I was going. <laughs> Yes. Okay, can I be can I be like devil's adv- advocate for a second? Yes. Yeah. Don't piss me off. You could kind of make that like I could go I could have done that with like if those numbers didn't work. I could say the guy who scored the touchdown, his number was 85. Like I feel like you could make it work. But, well, no shit, Jessica. Well, yeah. <laughs> you could make it work in any way. I can't make but any- like, if it was yeah. just that one play Equal 13, it would be like, okay. Yeah. But it's but crazy the that things. the 49ers, 58, her flight, mm. her 13th NFL. It's just very, very weird how that all comes You're to You're not be. a true Swifty. Oh, 13. no. Yes, I am. Yes, Is I am. Is everyone's new favorite number 13? All the Swifties should They're, be wearing yeah. 13. Mm. John's I don't really have a, a favorite number. Really? You it don't? It was eight for a while. Mine is I was eight. obsessed with Kobe Co- Bryant. Let's eight? stick with it then. Let's stick with eight. Yeah, eight because... Kobe and Infinity, and um, my birthday month is eight. All right. Well, let's let's stick with it. Um, all right. Moving on from Super Bowl talk. Um, 
Let's jump into reality television. Oh, my favorite. Vanderpump Rules? Yeah, you. Yeah. Because we didn't get to talk at all last week. No, we, we didn't we get to come into the, the office. We Amigas yeah. episode because we could not make it into the office. And yes, those of you who have to chain their tires because of snowstorms and it, blizzards, we don't know how to drive in the rain. And it was scary. Also, the it one thing scary. that moving from Utah to here and being like, they're idiots. This isn't... It's not built for weather. Sta- there it is. Yeah. They don't. We don't have drainage for all the rain that yes, we're getting. Exactly. That's the one thing I found out. So it's yeah. not like we can't drive. It's we literally can't drive because the city <laughs> isn't. You guys, I was going over the hill after like the storm had calmed, and on Mulholland and every single canyon closed. There were like boulders and like houses kind of in the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah. Rem- remember when you yes. told me to leave terrifying. your house? Yeah. When you were like, I'm worried, I want you to leave now. Yeah. When I was leaving, I was passing and they were closing down the canyon. Like they were putting, as I was about to, like I was going to the freeway, but I drove past it and they had like blockage because it was like n- rain, shit was in the road. It was horrifying. I got stuck in a puddle, which by the way, I know I've always heard. Um, turn around or whatever if you see if it's raining for flash floods. But I legit was driving home from the gym and I was like, ah, oh, that puddle doesn't, like I had to drive through it. doesn't look too bad. I freaking almost got stuck. It went like, whoom, my car went right <laughs> in. And then I was like, oh my God. And I was pushing on the, the gas Patriot? to get out. Yeah. The Patriot. The Patriot. My it- bottom bitch <laughs> got stuck. <laughs> but did, is she here today? She is here. The Patriot. A, I saw her in the parking lot. She, she is a Patriot too. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about it. Um, what should we start off with? Should we start with Miami? Um, oh, okay. So not Vanderpump first. No, let's. We'll, okay. we'll do Vanderpump last. Okay. All right. So um, they went. You guys know I love a moment with a higher power. Mm-hmm. So a new episode airs tonight. So we'll do two weeks ago. Um, Alexia wants to take everybody to Guadalupe, um, which is Jesus's mama. And she says that Guadalupe is the reason why Frankie is okay. Like, she attributes Frankie being okay to Guadalupe. And with everything that Gertie is going through, she takes the group there. And they have a really beautiful moment, actually. Like, even Gertie and her confessional was like, something happened in that church that I cannot explain. And I will remember it and cherish it forever. And I really like those moments on reality TV shows because it's such a heavy environment at all times that sometimes we forget like when there's the bickering as outsiders we're watching a show like there are times where I'll have people come up to me when a season's airing right and they'll be like for example like fuck Sheena or fuck Katie or fuck James whatever it may be and I'm like oh please don't talk about my friend that way like yes we have our ups and downs that you watch on television but like you don't get to say that about my fucking friends, you know? Yeah. So it's nice when you see that these people go at each other and then you have a moment of them being like, no matter what goes on, this is a moment that like forever, when this is all done, I will hold this close to my heart. Anyway, so that happened. Love Guadalupe. I want to go there. Me too. The church was stunning. Yeah. And it's just, I've heard that there's a certain sort of like, I don't know why, but like spiritual power there. Yeah. Yeah, but Julia had a different experience. So, Ethan, I don't know if you probably didn't know this, but Julia, the last time she was in church was when she was begging for answers because she had a son. This woman came to her door to take care of her son. as like a nanny. And I believe it was six weeks. I don't want to misspeak. Six weeks later. The shaking baby syndrome. Yes. So she said, I remember going to church, begging for answers, and I never got them. The only thing that kept me alive from not taking my own life was my little cocker spaniel. So she said, I have my my animals. That is my church when I'm around them. And for me, it's like your higher power can be anything. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, you, yeah, you can sit down in the park with your animals for an hour and that's you going to your church. 100%. As long as you just take time to like believe in whatever you believe in and preach it or not even preach it. Let me put it this way. Like take time to sit down and feel it or what's a good way to put this? Like, um, Just like get in touch with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like taking, taking time to get in touch and to feel whatever. 
whatever you can't believing. explain connect yeah. does that make sense yeah. connect to whatever you are doing if you take the time out doesn't matter when it is but that is your church i don't care what you believe in or how you believe in it but if you take the time and do it yeah that's for me that's a huge you know like okay I can respect you because you take that time. Mm. And that's mm-hmm. what I like. I loved like hearing her because I actually did he, like feel it when she was like, my animals are my temple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, damn, because my dogs, when I wake up any day, like I take 10 minutes and I just lay in my bed with them. Yeah. And, like, every and it's day, a feeling you can't really explain. I can't explain it. But like there's a lot of feel in them. And I feel like my dad. Mm. because they were a lot, you know? So there's yeah. just, like, feeling. And when she said that, like, I got emotional. Yeah. yeah. I was like, damn, okay, there's people that also do that. So I'm glad that she said that and all of that. So. Yeah, we're not going to all find answers in the no, same thing. No, you can't. That's what we, we talk about that in AA a lot. Like, when you go to AA, it's very heavy God talk, and sometimes it turns people off. But you have to kind of put your guard down to hear the message because it's like, hold on, we're not talking about God in the sky we're talking about something that you feel is more powerful than you. It could be the tree. Your definition of God. Right. It could be your animals. It doesn't matter. When we're talking about God, that is a personal thing to you. And the moment that someone brings that up when they're talking, you know exactly who your God is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I've heard, what to say? I'm going to butcher it, but God is the name Guys, I'm going to butcher it. No, it was something like God is the name is the blanket term for an energy to put around an energy mm. we can't describe. Something love like it. that. I like but, that. Mm. You know what you I said love that about. Well, if for not knowing what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. You didn't butcher it. You recreated <laughs> it if that's not it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Ethan. I love that this oh, podcast I'm we can here, go from like word. coming all over our faces Jesus. to like talking about God. Do you like to come on ladies' faces, Easton? Oh, no, I don't want to know. Oh, I don't want to know. I hearing like, about right. China. I didn't do that. That's Jessica's <laughs> yes, fault. Yes, that is. All right. I okay, so <laughs> let's move on to Lisa. Um, Lenny comes with an offer to Lisa. Um, he's going to buy her a home. It has a gorgeous view. However, it needs to be renovated. She's about to sign the deal. Everyone's on board. Lawyers, Lenny, Lisa. She gets a phone call. Cameras are not allowed to capture the phone call because Lenny wouldn't allow it. And comes with this. There's strings attached. The only way I'm going to do this for you, a man can never reside in the home with you permanently. What a sick. And she said, right, how sick. And she goes, well, what about your mistress? And he goes, well, Lisa, like, I'm paying for this stuff. And it just, it's just wild to me how quickly things can change. One minute you're like sleeping next to this person who you're in love with. You have a family. You create this beautiful life. And the next it's like, found a new one. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Um, oh, and you can't and have I'm a man. And I'm still going to control everything because yeah. I've got the money. But, like, my mistress is going to be around and, like, kicking it with the kids. But, like, not for you. Only for me. Because why? I'm rich. And you're not. It is... Disgusting. Yes. But the thing is, we can't, we can't make people undisgusting. Mm-hmm. Right? We can only control what we can control. What can we control? We can control ourselves. So... People can call me wounded all day long and you're going to find love and you're going to find this and X, Y, and Z. Let's remember, humans are humans, okay? So for me, it's like, yes, live your happily ever after. Believe in that wholeheartedly. But always make sure that you're teed up on your own because this this guy could die. He could lose his job. He could leave you. There's a million and one scenarios we could come up with. He could be sued for all the money in the world. You better be prepared to step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. So that's just another reason why I tell bitches. Stack your freaking coins. Yeah. Yeah. Preach. Hello, all of you Give Them Lala fans. I have some amazing news. Etsy has gift mode. So now there's absolutely no reason to panic the next time you're in need of the perfect gift. Gift Mode on Etsy is here to take the stress out of gifting so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. Now it's so easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for 
all of the people in your life, like the dog lover, the concert goer, the fashionista, or the reality TV fan. There is literally something for everyone on Etsy. Ocean's birthday is coming up, and let me tell you about a couple of things I found for her on Etsy. I got her this super cute personalized LED neon sign for her new room, and a really cute handbag that I don't have to worry about losing or accidentally throwing out. And a couple of people have asked me for gift ideas for O, and I told them to use gift mode on Etsy for the creative kit. A gifting moment is always around the corner, but whether it's a birthday, an anniversary, a holiday, or even just a day to say thank you, gift mode on Etsy has you covered. Need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Try gift mode on Etsy today. You guys, how good is my hair looking this season on Vanderpump Rules? You know the struggles that I've had with this hair. I've talked about it a lot on the podcast, but this hair, it's thanks to Vegamore. Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free, and there are no potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones in any of their products. My hair is thicker, fuller, shinier, and it's getting longer, and I'll let you in on one of my secrets. It's all about consistency. I've been using the Vegamore Grow Serum for months now. It's part of my regular hair care routine. I signed up for the monthly subscription. It saves me money, which I love, and I never run out of product. I also love that Grow Serum does not leave any kind of greasy residue or stickiness in my hair. And here's a fun fact. Vegamore told me that they sell one bottle of Grow Hair Serum every 15 seconds on their website. That's how good this serum is. So elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash Lala and use code Lala at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash Lala, code Lala to save 20% off your first order. That's vegamore.com slash Lala, code Lala. Larsa says to Lisa that she would regret if she lost Jody because Lisa is needy <laughs> and no other man would put up with her crap. Lisa takes offense to this and calls Larsa a bully. Um, I really find it very interesting. And I think we've talked about this before. When women have been in long-term relationships, they go south. I believe we've spoken about this in other in another episode, but I'm going to talk about it again because it's relevant here. And then they meet a guy and they're like, he just made me believe in love again. I'm like, give him 15 years. I'm <laughs> sure he'll fuck you over in 15 some way. 15 years? All right. Give him like well, a she, was with, she was with Lenny for 15 years. Yeah. It's kind of like when Sheena says, you know, we, we love Dan. He's way better than Sandoval. Like as, as long as, you know, he, he hasn't, uh, had sex with one of her best friends, so he's winning. And it's like, well, it's been three months. Let's mm. give him 10 years. I'm mm. sure he'll fuck, he'll your fuck up soon. in some way. <laughs> like, he's gonna fuck it your drives soon. me crazy. If I were to meet a man right now, and let's just say we're filming, and they were like, has he made you believe in love again? It's like, well, I mean, I we're like having a good time. I enjoy it. But him. I'm not an idiot. Like, right. tomorrow could be different. Do I hope that this is a different situation? Yes, but like, people are people. So like, let's just stick to the now. Right now, I'm happy. But I'm not going to say, he made me believe in love again. He's so great. Uh, I'm going to give him some years because I'm sure he'll do something to piss me off. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll do something to piss him off, yeah, too. Yeah, no, I was going to yeah. say, you'll give him the reason. Because I'm a real yeah. gem at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. And then I'm not. All right, moving on. Um, This is my favorite. Shit hits the fan on the gondola. It sure does. Jessica, go for it. Take over. <sighs> Shit does hit the fan. I have a couple things that I focused on for that, right? So, Lisa throwing food to the dogs off the boat. Mm, 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 mm. Quickly, in my brain, I thought, oh, I might do that too. Just a little chicken or like something I know the dogs can have. And then that switched because I'm like, oh, that's actually... Very ignorant. And, like, you could tell the gondola driver was very uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And she really doubled down. I think it was the doubling down that was hard. That's what it was. Versus being like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I wasn't even thinking. Like, what am I doing? What an right. idiot. Like, I, when I see dogs, I want to throw them treats. And I wasn't thinking. And that was an ignorant moment. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So that was something where I was like, ugh. And I had immediately switched. And like I said, in our... um. Bonus episode last week, one of my biggest pet peeves, non-negotiables, is like, 
when people don't take the, not the help, but like the employee or whatever into consideration, like you saw the gondola driver, you saw how he was reacting, like look at him and be like, oh my God. And like, take that into consideration. And, and she read can, the room. Read the well, yeah. room. And read the, the gondola. Yes. Um, read. The- <laughs> read the gondola. <laughs> I, I mean, I have, like, points, so if I'm skipping around too much, just tell me. No, go through your bullet points. I put the Lisa yelling scene gave me so much anxiety. I agree with Larsa. Seems like Lisa losing it over the juice boxes. Oh, yes, yeah, so, something much deeper, which we end up finding out it is. But I'm sitting, because I'm making notes in real time, and I'm like, something's going on. Lisa's losing it over a juice box. Where did they even get the juice you box? You assaulted me! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... Then can I tell you, my daughter assaults me every day. (laughs) Every day I'm assaulted. (laughs) But I felt like my heart went out to her because she's losing over juice box. I have done that before. Are you kidding me? Where I'm I'm like in an argument with Kyle over some and I hear myself. I'm like, you know, and you just you put my socks in that drawer and you don't care. Like they obviously (laughs) go in the top drawer and it just shows you don't care. And he's like. You're losing. I can put myself in her spot. And even drunk. Yeah. Drunk me. Oh. Uh, like going through. Drunk you is a real special thing <laughs> to <laughs> do with. <laughs> We've all done it before, right? right? Where there's something deeper and you just, the, the oh. one little thing throws you over. Well, not only, yeah. So the juice box, mm-hmm. her feeding the dogs, and then the she signings of the paper. She's feeling ganged up on and then it's she like, also oh. has a lot going on yeah. at home. Yeah. So then she starts, she breaks down over the signing of the divorce papers. And so I then I was like, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Cry it out. Yeah. And then the last bullet point I made was Island of the Dolls, I thought was creepy. And I know it's a... But I might be being a completely ignorant, by the way. This might be some sort of, like, beautiful... I know, like, well, they explained it. You, yes. The, the, little, the little girl... Yes. I thought it was pretty. Drown in that lake. Yeah. Or whatever it was. River. Is it a river? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And the man who lived there and watched it was traumatized, and he kept seeing this girl in his dreams. So he put dolls all around so that she, when her spirit came back, had something to play with. Creepy. He may be. <laughs> and it's a beautiful, uh, it's not even a beautiful story. I'm sorry. Just creep me out. It's the fact that the dolls if were naked. Was, it's the fact that they exactly were hanging. hanging from like their head. Like if he were just to like put them up in a different placement, it wouldn't be you as creepy. You guys, they were naked. They had no limbs. Yeah. They were missing eyes. They were, it was well, weird. How long and had put they flowers up. That's if you're, true. Yeah, and it's put true. flowers how long, up. How long had they all been there? Like, was this in 1950? Because right. some of those dolls I don't know. Marisol was like, it smells old. like death. I want to get out of here. Yeah. Everyone was really creeped out. I didn't like that. So there's that. All right. Well, to piggyback off of that. Let's hear it. So, in last week's episode, they go to the gondola and it picks back up where the dolls are. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is losing it. Okay. Like they're, showing, to get out. they're showing Gertie and she's sobbing. She's got <laughs> mascara everywhere. She starts throwing up. People are taking, then they flash to Lars and she's like taking, taking selfies. selfies <laughs> and, what? Uh, Marisol's like, it smells like death. We got to get out of here. And she's like running to the boat. <laughs> and then uh, Adriana's walking trying to like not crack her heels and they're like we have everyone let's go and everyone's like adrian and she's like it's so weird (laughs) (laughs) they're all losing their goddamn minds the gondola and then as gertie's vomiting this other gondola pulls around and the mariachi bands on it and then a dog starts barking and the way that they edit it together and then they flash to alexia's confessional she's like it's very chaotic (laughs) I love the I bros so much. Marisol and Alexia, yeah. they give me all that. Energy. It is just such a vibe. I'm like, make me a bros. Yeah. Yeah. Make me a bros. Um, okay, so that was really funny. I was dead over that. Um it was last week's episode, not much happened. Julia um spells Adriana's name wrong on the sign for her performance. It says Viva. Uh, Adriana, but it has an E instead of an I, <laughs> and it's for her performance in front of 200,000 people. Oh, no. And she, Miami on fire, fire, <laughs> whatever the song is. The song's lit, but I don't really remember the tune. Oh. Um, so that was funny. But then it pops off because the Kiki and Lisa situation on the gondola is addressed. Kiki opens up, and she's like, what you don't understand 
is when you said, like, I, it's just chicken. I'm feeding these dogs. What they're eating is better than what they're being fed. Kiki starts opening up about where she's from in Haiti. She was kicked out at 15. She's very vulnerable. And she was like, no one ever asks me about anything. I listen to y'all's problems all the time. I also have issues. She was kicked out at 15, like I said. They show photos of her going back to her childhood home. It is very much like those homes that we saw when they were that on the gondola. That they were all talking very lowly about. Yes, and so she says to Lisa, like, I know that you're going through a lot, but you need to remember, like, you have your health. You have beautiful children. So money is not everything. Remember that. She's like, I have two children. I don't have a husband. Like, no one asked me, do you know what my son's... I love when these women now are saying, like, you, you what is my kid's name? Yeah. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I, I can't imagine filming a television show with someone who didn't know my child's name. Yeah. I really can't. Mm -hmm. And Lisa responds, it is not my job to heal your childhood trauma. Oh, that's I'm not, not a what therapist. she's fucking asking. Loses her mind, Kiki. <laughs> Loses her mind. And she goes, Lenny leaving you is your fucking karma. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we have gone there. I love Kiki so much. Because you know what? There are times, and I, and I know you'll see this season on Vanderpump, where I obsess over my situation. And again, there's things that people don't know that we won't get into. But at the end of the day, it's important when someone like Kiki comes in to the mix and they can remind you, you're healthy. Okay? You live a beautiful life. And yes, this is not an easy time right now. But let's remember that the dollar amount and where you're living is not everything. Because to see some of these women take it out of Miami, a lot of these places where they're like, I just can't live in 5,000 square feet. And I'm like, you fucking out of touch, bitch. Mm. Like, really? It is so off-putting and gross. Yeah. So I love when someone like Kiki points out, like, you've got a beautiful life. And right now it's fucking rough, but it'll be fine. Right. Right? right. Yeah. For me, that's my mom. When I start like obsessing and she'll obsess with me, but then she brings it back to like, but let's focus on the positive. Ocean's healthy. You're healthy. Eason's healthy. We live a beautiful life. Like, look at the things we get to go and do. Look at what we get to experience. Like, all is good. This part will work itself out. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So there's that. This right. too shall pass. Right. That's, what I live, that's what I live by. If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time to also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashbackdebit. Discover Bank. Member FDIC. You want to talk about Vanderpump? BH, yeah. was a little, BH was a little snoozy, funny. Erica talks about Merce and the purse <laughs> and, becomes, <laughs> and becomes like the most, she's so drunk and knows everything about everything. Everyone. Everyone's sitting there being like, how are you so smart? She knows everything about all of these like historical moments in in European history, American history. Uh, what's her name? Kyle Richards is like, she's like a drunk rain man. Like, how does she know so much? She's very intelligent. And you know what? She's like, I've had the luxury of being around like really smart people. And I'm like, so have I, but I don't retain shit. Right. No, okay. same. You can, same. She's smart. She's very, yeah. I'm telling you, someone who can be around smart people and absorb and retain, like for me, you could tell me all the smart jargon in the world and it's like, broop, broop, broop. did you see Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? <laughs> <laughs> now that I retain. <laughs> that I retain. Um, anyway, so, but we are getting into this last episode um, that aired last week. It'll come on tonight, BH, new episode. Kyle is starting to open up about her marriage. Anyway, you want to move on to Vanderpump? Sure, if you would like to. Yeah, let's do it. You tell us where you want to go. 
Well, you guys go done? for it. I mean, what you have notes, Jess. I do. I have a lot of notes. So this is the scene, not this most recent, or I'm sorry, not this most recent episode. Are you, are you wanting to go back two weeks? Yeah, let's or no, talk just about to it. See, I have a not couple much, questions. Not much happened in last night's episode. How are you feeling about the past two eps? Um, you guys, I'm always real and I'm always honest. The season's snoozy right now. Just um, with the two. Um, well, we're three episodes in now. No, I'm saying past two. The first one was not. The premiere. The premiere was great. Yeah. Um, the last two episodes are snoozy. Mm. I feel like I have to acknowledge that because I don't want you guys to think that I'm living in La La Land or hustling you. I want you to remember we're trying to repair something that is very, very broken. So the last two episodes are very much setting the groundwork for what the season is going to be like. Two weeks ago, it was Tom Sandoval heavy. We had to see where he was at, mm -hmm. right? Um, I loved watching the scene between Lisa and Tom Sandoval and him being like, I just want it done. Mm -hmm. I want to move on. And I think we need to. Like, yes, he did this, but you guys... It, it's. I, I agree <laughs> he did this, but the one thing that he does need to do is take ownership. It is like the James thing. Their conversation. He brought up... Um, let me tell you something, your, Easton. It's like just and this is a up. tough, tough, own tough up. pill to swallow for mm. people. Okay? And it took me a really long time and a lot of talking to people because Scandaval, it had nothing to do with me, yet it triggered me so fucking much because I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe he did this to my friend, but I couldn't believe he sat across from me and said all the shit he said to me. Let me tell you something. He's not taking accountability and ownership because he does not regret it. Mm. And... He, then come out and say that. But all, I think in a way, be, he's saying, we don't have control over other people. No, not at all. I'm saying on his end, he just needs to take accountability. He is like, when James, he brings up Kristen. It's but like, in his take, mind, he's like, I, Kristen was my girlfriend mm -hmm. and you fucked her. Mm -hmm. like, and we were for also, him, it is the same. Yeah, now but, me, if when I hear it, I'm like, you got to let it go. I stand behind everything I said at the reunion. Mm -hmm. You got to let it go. But what I've learned from dealing just with needing to heal and let go is I can't control how other people see things. Oh, for sure. Emotion Nor is it my job to shed light. I can sit here and I can tell you how I feel all the live long day, but your perspective is going to be yeah. different than mine. And I have to make peace with that or I will be banging my head against a wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emotions are personal. That's why you talk about them. Correct. So you can feel each other. So but yes, that's one thing that- It is very annoying. It is annoying as fuck to watch it, and all you have to do is take a little bit of accountability that he is not taking. He didn't on- It was funny because he was on Nick Vial's podcast, both the Toms were a couple, and it's a theme in his life, and I'm not like- it just. Mm -hmm. I, it's just something I'm noticing with, with these scenes and him not taking accountability, clearly- Always, always turning it on someone else. But the Nick Vial podcast, he was on it and he was super late. Sandoval was super late. Schwartz was there. Sandoval was super late. Immediately when he's questioned about being late, he goes, well, Nick, you were you were on my podcast a, few, a couple months ago and you were hours late. And Nick was like, no, I wasn't. What are you talking about? He ends up pulling up receipts and he wasn't late. Like Tom was just like making it up. Like and he can't take accountability he, for no, anything. They, and they kept it in the episode. And then also he's not, he didn't take accountability. And I do like credit to Nick Vial. He was kind of pushing him back on this. He's like, dude, you're just not, he wasn't taking accountability on that episode. He's not in these episodes. And it sucks because a big part of me was like, oh damn, he's going to come back. And I get it. He did the apology to Sheena last season, but like, he's going to come back and he's going to be on this like working on himself and growth and blah, blah, blah. And it's like not happening so no, far. No, all he's saying is, I want it to be over. It's like, well, then yes, maybe I take understand. a couple of steps towards that. That being, right. yes. That being, but, and I think yeah. you guys will see that. I think I right now so. it's like very much, we're filming a reality TV show. Mm -hmm. I, I can't make something out of something it's not. It's awkward. We're not hanging out with him at this point in time. So, yes, it's a little bit like, why isn't anything happening? Well, let me tell you something. The group is extremely fractured three episodes in. Movement starts happening. Time starts passing. Perspective. Lisa steps in and sheds some light. Things do start shifting. Um, but, yes, I just wanted to acknowledge that. And it is very annoying. 
It is very annoying. Well, I can only imagine coming from your guys' point of view. But that's why you say, you know what? I'm going to make peace with the fact that you see things differently than me. I'm not going to hold anything against you. You stay over there. I'm going to stay over here. Just so you know, wish you nothing but the best. I don't want to light you on fire anymore. It's a little bit yeah. just like, you here you goofy. are, here I am. Yeah. He you, moves goofy and, and you stay away from it. That on the, Yeah, so on that note, I do want to, I know it's further down the line in the most recent episode. I do want to touch on the trigger warning um, the suicide part because I found that to be like that's something that like if people know me they know like that's a I have a deep history with stuff like that in my family so when he said I was sort of in that Lisa boat of like when he when someone says that you you have to I mean I've learned you got to take it seriously it, you know you can't really just be like well he's just trying and maybe they are maybe they say things but that's not I, for I, us I, to well, decide not going to be the like, yeah, no, judge no, no, no. and jury on if you mean that or no, not yeah. no 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 so that was a thing but, but like how Lisa said she'd rather reach out 100%. before it was, before it's too late and well, be and like is it something mm-hmm. and look a fool if mm-hmm. it isn't mm-hmm. I'd rather look a fool than it be too late. Yeah. Is what mm-hmm. I think she mm-hmm. said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I think that after that conversation, that's when certain people's um, feelings shift mm-hmm. this season. Yeah. Because I can imagine, I, I mean, I can't imagine, but when everyone's against you and you're getting threats and you're getting, I'm sure the, the way that can take you to a dark place is probably pretty quick. Especially if you're maybe alone or you were sharing this with someone and then that someone maybe stops talking to you, which is what we kind of learn. He hasn't talked to Raquel. And so who knows? But that is, that's fragile. And And let's just go off what he's saying is actually the truth. It sounds that he was very much in love with Raquel. I'm going to take my own personal feeling away from it and what I have experienced in my life and take it for just face value in what he says. It seems like he's bummed that things happened the way they did, but he does not regret it because he feels that he was no longer in with Ariana. He was disconnected. In his mind, he tried to have conversations with her that she maybe wasn't accepting. I don't know if that's true. Again, this is just what he's saying. And he had found his person in Raquel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he doesn't regret it. And that's fine. But take the accountability and say, I really did this in a shitty way. And I should have done this in a very different way. Mm -hmm. And that is accountability. Because right now, I wish I would have gone about it differently. differently. But I'm sorry. I love her. And shit happens. And and like, at Bye. least you can be respected because you're being honest. But when you're tiptoeing and shit like that, I can't come to you with, like, vision that you're not going to fuck me over. Because you're not even being honest in anything or taking accountability. So why, everything that you move about is silly to me. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't, I don't take you serious. Yeah, that's true. And that's true. the one thing. Take a bit of accountability. It might suck for a couple of months, but you'd be in a fucking better spot than you are right now. And you probably have some good homies, too. Yeah. No, I agree with you. On to a lighter topic. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Yeah. When I gasped audibly (laughs) at the scene, I'm going to preface this by saying I I fucking loved it. The scene, I've never seen that music video with Sheena. (laughs) So we are watching and Kyle and I are on the couch and we're just like kind of, you know, whatever. It's fine. And then that flashback of Sheena and the, the like spanking and <laughs> Kyle and I went, oh! and Kyle goes, dead serious. He goes, oh, was she in a porn? And I, <laughs> exactly. It was a little porny. By I the don't way, remember ever I, seeing this music video. Bravo. That's a bad I bitch. Know. She's out. She's like, <laughs> I like Woo! when he was taking his hair, her hair and treating <laughs> like she was a horse. <laughs> When I tell you, I have never lost it. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and the boldness of the editors to flash back. Oh, oh the editors are so bold. I mean, that was incredible. The Bravo, editors Sheena. are bold. Bravo. <laughs> oh. Holy Did she shit. Do porn? Oh, oh my God. That it is was good. It was good. That is so funny. I'm totally fine leaving it on that note. Okay. Uh, I hope. Um, I'll do that. And then what? What happened last night? We just get invited to. Uh, last night we talked a little bit. Yeah, the Tahoe thing. We talked yeah. a little bit about the Lisa Sandoval. Oh, Lisa and Sandoval. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered it all. Um, do we have an ache and relief of the week, everybody? Ache and relief. Who wants to start? Uh, I can start us. Or Easton, go. Oh, yeah. Are you I'll ready? S- yeah, I didn't I know if you were say, teed up. No, my ache and relief is the same. 
Okay. Oh, I like this. My ache is Utah's done. We're out. Oh, Sold the, the state of Utah. Yes. Oh, I thought you meant the a basketball team. No, no, like, no. The okay. state of Utah. We have oh. moved. We have one place left in St. George, but mom our wants home, to hang on to it. But that's the second one. Yeah, but the house in Salt Lake City is gone, and mm-hmm. that's a whole lot of uh, memories and things like that. That's a huge ache, but I'm excited to go back. So it's like an ache and relief. I'm excited to go back and and, and enjoy. And it. enjoy. You don't have to go back and. I deal. was painting homes when I'd go mm-hmm. back. I was repainting fences. I was. Mm-hmm nailing shit into walls for different things so i'm excited to go back but it was an ache and relief and also for my mother who i'm very proud of who did a lot of work and a lot of throwing away and i know it wasn't easy for her so shout Good out to for my you mom. Lise. yeah well my she called me and i know she called you jess as well <laughs> crying because she was like you know some of this stuff was my mom's and it just feels so final that she's gone i'm like mom, mom she died like 20 done. years ago <laughs> Grace. If it didn't, if it had, if it didn't feel final by now, I don't think it ever will. Well, <laughs> and we t- haven't accepted it yet. She told me too. She was like, "Are you sure? Like, you don't want anything?" I was like, "Lisa, there's no memory of me seeing this." And she goes, "But we'll put it in storage." I said, "If you die and that's in storage, that's going delinquent. No one's that. Not yeah, going right. <laughs> done. Yeah. Somebody no. else's treasure." Yeah. yeah, I'm excited because my childhood baby grand piano yeah. that my dad bought me. Um, I finally have a place for in the new house. Yep. This is exciting. So it it's is. on its way. A lot of stuff from Utah is coming to the house too. So I think that will help. Yeah. You know, Jess, what's your ache and relief, my love? <laughs> my ache and relief is the same thing. So with Lala mentioning she moved into a new house, we will be moving out of our current offices at the end of February that you guys have seen on Vanderpump Rules that we recorded as the three of us, oh, the podcast in together. That was my first one. Yeah. And yep. you know what? It, it's such that we like made friends with like Action Park and Loon and, and it was such a fun space, but I've never felt more not done with the space but like it's time. you can say that yeah you can say you feel done yeah it's time it's time for us to be out of there um so yeah ache that we're moving but relief that it's time it is time i feel like i'm finally creating roots of my own mm-hmm. in la you know i've always lived in an apartment until i got involved with my last whatever and then moved back into an apartment and now it's like, wow, we're really creating a life. We, we've we bought a home that I'm going to fill with children and family. <laughs> and it's crazy. Our stuff. Right. It is crazy. It's so, it was weird being there, watching the Super Bowl. I was like looking around. I was like, like we're home. This, yeah. like, this is it. Yeah. That's exciting. Great. Pretty amazing. Um, my ache of the week is Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank said, families need to have five million in the bank to survive no matter what happens. <laughs> Well, um, well, Kevin O'Leary, I don't know if you've been out I in these some? streets. It's <laughs> kind of hard to yeah, just like get out. $5 million to just sit in a bank. Um, so maybe if you feel that way, you should hand out $5 million to everybody. And that way we're all going to be okay forever. Please don't say stupid shit. Yeah. But I'd love for you to invest in um, the new company that I'm creating. Yay. <laughs> we'll contact you. Because I'd really like to have $5 million so I can survive through anything and everything. <laughs> just another out of touch person. Out of I know. Touch. Out of touch. Just like just a quick five mil because yeah. you could survive anything. For safety. Shut up. Shut up, first. you billionaire. Yeah. Fuck I off. know. It's always the billionaire saying stupid shit. It really is. Yeah. Like, get back to where you came from. Have I, we forgotten? How much is milk? Oh, I don't know. They don't know. Oh. I you know, do. It's not I even know a how lot. much fucking milk is. Me too. I'm out Inflation here. Inflation isn't real. Milk <laughs> is only like twelve dollars a gallon. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Anyway. My relief of the week is Amber. Sent me a text while we were moving, and she was like, hey, um, Riley wants to call you. And I was like, great. I'd love to say what's up. Riley calls me, and she goes, can we take Ocean to the movie Migration? And I was like, oh, my God. Do you know how helpful that would be for me right now? Because I have been moving with a toddler, like packing her up from apartment to house, apartment to house. Take her to the movie just for her to, I texted Amber and I was like, how's the movie going? She goes, well, she told me how bored she was 10 <laughs> minutes in. So we're at the house building a fort. And I was like, no. thank you so much. So just honest. the relief of the week was Amber taking my daughter. Love that. Okay. We've got like a real good modern You've family. You've got a modern family. They came family. over for the Super Bowl yesterday. They did. They? The kids. Yeah. yeah, it was way Amber, fun. Amber, London, and Riley. That is so fun. It's All really grown. cute. No, I love it. I like them. I like their energy. 
They're, I love yeah. them a lot. She texted me the other day. She was like, hey, I'm running to Costco. Do you need anything? I'm like, Maybe you know, I'll go with you. We, really, we really have a special thing going on here. <laughs> you really do. We do. It's excellent. Um, anyway, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Reminder, um, a new episode drops every Wednesday wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, the video of this drops Fridays on YouTube at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And also a reminder, we do bonus episodes. Uh, audio and video drops every single Monday. You're welcome. Have the best day. Love you. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you next week.